Hello, I'm Joyce Harper and I'm Professor at the Institute for Women's Health at University College London and I'd like in this video to introduce to you the Embryology and PGD Academy Distance Learning Certificate in Clinical Embryology but specifically an introduction to Module 5 which is on new technology and ethical considerations in ART. Alpesh Doshi and I have been working together for many, many years delivering education around embryology. We've been running over 50 hands-on workshops, which I first started in 1996. And a few years ago, we set up a distance learning course in clinical embryology, but the course is incredibly flexible. It's all by distance learning, and there are eight modules delivered by global leaders. But if you're a nurse or a scientist or a clinician, and you don't want to take the full certificate, you are absolutely welcome to take individual modules. And I think this module, module five, thinking about the future of our technology and the ethical considerations around assisted reproductive technologies is ideally suited for anyone interested in this area to take. So we have individual modules with or without exams. You don't have to take the exams. And um, there's also an exit exam for those that are working uh, in embryology. And if you're actually working in an embryology lab right now and you want to do the full certificate, then the complete package is eight modules exams at the end of each module, a logbook for modules one to four, which where you uh, put in about doing a particular number of different cases and lab techniques. And then there's an online exit exam where we're going to look at videos of you doing key procedures. You're going to write an essay and there's also an oral exam. And the modules are accredited by the Royal College of Pathologists. So let's have a look at the modules. I've been teaching in reproductive science and prenatal genetics since 1996. I'm director of education at our Institute for Women's Health and um, we have a great number of master's courses, four master's courses in all. And we, through the years, have taught many of the world leaders, both on the clinical side and the laboratory side of assisted reproduction. So from that work, I thought it was really important to think about giving embryologists and those interested in these areas a very wide range of topics to be covered in this very unique program. So we start at the laboratory from gamete to embryo, then about oocytes and sperm and embryo cryopreservation, and then genetics, pre-implantation genetic testing and prenatal diagnosis, and lab design, quality assessment and troubleshooting. So these four, first four modules are quite lab orientated. They're very scientific. Um, anyone can take them. As I've said, you can take individual modules, but these are the four core modules that I feel embryologists, all embryologists need to take to help understand the theory of what they do in the IVF lab. And this really comes out of a passion. When I was an embryologist back in 1987, I was an embryologist for five years and I was very aware that I was taught the practical aspects of what I was doing, but not the theoretical aspects. And I helped set up the ESHRA uh, certificate for embryologists and invigilated the first few years of exams. But I think that it's really important to have a, a comprehensive, comprehensive syllabus for embryologists. So this is why we've got this eight module program. So the last four modules, we start with new technology and ethics of reproductive medicine. And I'm going to talk to you about that in this talk. Then we've got clinical aspects of IVF. Finally, gametogenesis and pre-implantation development and reproductive health in general. I think it's really important for everyone to understand all of these topics. So how the modules work for every lecture, there will be a bio and a photo of the speaker, a written summary of the talk, a video of the talk, which is the same as what you're seeing now with the PowerPoint. And then the exam is multiple choice. So at the end of each uh, talk, there'll be three multiple cho choice questions for your revision. So even if you're not taking the exam, you could just do this as a piece of fun to see how much you took in from the lecture. And then every lecture, there's feedback for you to tell us what you thought about the lecture. So for each module, you watch each talk in order, and when the module is complete, you can do the online multiple choice exam for those doing the full certificate. And we do regular catch ups via Zoom. And we've also done recently um, some webinars, etc. So to apply for the certificate or modules, 
please visit the embryologycertificate.com. You can absolutely just try individual modules, see how you get on and then build up to do the full certificate. You can pay for modules individually or pay for the whole certificate in one go. It's incredibly flexible. The easiest way to pay is PayPal, but you can also pay by Banker's Draft. And all of these modules are open at all times throughout the year. So there's no deadlines. So you can take any of these modules at your own pace and do this in your own time. If you've got any inquiries, please email this email here. So this module, module five, is something that's really, I think, the exciting area of where we are. What about the future and the ethical considerations around ART? So uh, this is the introduction to the module. Then I've got Dan Reisel, who I've worked with for many years at University College. He is going to talk about the ethical considerations in assisted reproductive technology. Sagar Kasiri has um, worked with me for decades. She was one of my original master's students back in 1996. And it's been an absolute pleasure working with her over these decades. Originally, she was a clinical embryologist for many, many years, and more recently has started working with Cryos, the sperm bank that I'm sure you all know about. Christina Wies is going to talk about the global surrogacy market. And again, really important topic for us to discuss in this module. Who else but Francoise Shenfield? I'm sure you all know her from a huge amount of work she's done at ESHRA with the working group in, uh, with special interest group in ethics and law. And she is going to talk about cross-border reproductive care. And she's been the main person driving this research globally. So you may wonder how I've mixed in this module some of the patient uh, topics and then some of the lab topics, but I hope you're gonna see how we bring this together. So Roger Sturmey, again, a very good friend of mine, is going to talk about the embryo culture system and what will be next, talking about how we're moving forward with this technology, especially around automation. And then I've picked two of the really hot topics that are coming into our discussions in assisted reproductive technology. Mary Herbert is one of the leaders in the world in mitochondrial replacement te techniques, using, uh, working on this at the University of Newcastle, and uh, she's going to outline how this procedure is done. And I want us to think about, will this technology be used in the future, not just for those patients carrying mitochondrial disorders, but what about using this for patients with failed IVF? This has already been done in some countries, and this is one of the ethical issues where I think we need to discuss these things because this is start being done now. And then this is why we bring in cross-border reproductive care. People might travel to a different country because this technology might not be legal in their country, but they may want to go to another country to try it. So people are crossing borders, not just for things like donation and surrogacy, but also for laboratory techniques. Genome editing, Helen O'Neill is going to tell us about this. Helen travels the world talking about genome editing. And this is a hot topic, especially as it has now been performed in China uh, back in 2019, as I'm sure you all know. And in my lecture, I'm going to bring everything together. I'm going to bring in the future of reproduction. I think everyone working in ART needs to think about these things. Will we have a time when we don't actually need to worry about female fertility decline because we'll use induced pluripotent stem cells to make huge numbers of eggs for women? Will we be doing PGT for a growing number of issues? We haven't discussed PGT in this module because we've discussed this in the PGT module in module three, but I am going to bring in some of the controversial uses of PGT that are being done now and that could be done in the near future and also looking at around genetic testing. And where will we go from then? Will we start editing the genome of our embryos? Will we find more people coming through IVF who don't have any fertility issues, but who want to use this technology to try and use either PGT or genome editing to create their most desired child? So this is why it's important to discuss all of these topics within this module, looking at new technology and ethical considerations in ART. So the aims and learning objectives of this module is to educate students on the ethical issues and to think about the future of reproduction. So we're starting with the ethical issues around the patient treatment, 
egg and sperm donation, surrogacy and cross-border reproductive care. But that's merging very much now into the ethical issues in the lab. So the future of the lab, mitochondrial transfer and genome editing. And then I'm going to bring all of this together. How will we make our children and our grandchildren in the future? Will people stop having sex to reproduce? They'll all, or if they've got the money, reproduce by assisted reproductive technologies. I really feel strongly that all of us in this field need to think and discuss these issues now because some of these things are possible right now. So we need to talk about them. So I've had a big interest in the interface between genetics and assisted reproduction for many years. And I've been one of the leads of a group of experts that have got together a few times. We're experts from the European Society of Human Genetics and the European Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology, ESHRA. And we have had wonderful discussions about this uh, interface between genetics and medically assisted reproduction and where this is going to go in the near future and uh, this paper was published now a few years ago and I think it's very much time for this group to reconvene and to talk about some of the issues that are really bubbling under and really will be possible in the near future. Uh, just to mention the global partners for the certificate uh, listed here and um, some of the companies that have uh, given us support over the years. So if you want to apply for the certificate or any of the modules or this module, please visit the embryologycertificate.com. Uh, details of our workshops and other activities can be found at the embryology and pgdacademy.com. Any inquiries to the email below. Uh, please follow us on YouTube. I put a lot of videos there with the Embryology and PGD Academy. And on Facebook, we have uh, Embryology and PGD Academy Facebook page. And I have two Facebook accounts. Uh, this one here is my work one. Um, my other one is for just private things. So uh, Joyce Harper Work is the one that anyone should follow me on. And on social media, I'm at Prof Joyce Harper and Alpesh on on Twitter is at Alpesh Doshi IVF and on Instagram is a Doshi2. So thank you very much. I hope that you're going to hopefully enroll in this module and really enjoy the discussions and thoughts that we're going to bring into in this module. So thank you very much. <laughs>